Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pension Committee and Board um, September's meeting. We've got a, a, further, a, a full agenda this morning, and just to let people know that this meeting will be live streamed. Okay, we'll move into apologies. Have we any apologies? Some apologies from, uh, I think, sorry, I had it written down somewhere, uh, Councillor Valsilli. Yeah, and Ed Morrison and Hassan from EY. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Have we got any declarations of interest? Nope. Don't see anybody. Nope, that's great. Thank you. Straight into agenda item three, that's our minutes of our last meal. Can we agree the minute? For accuracy? Agreed. Yep. Is there anything on the minute that's not on the agenda that anyone wants to ask? Nope. Great. Agenda item four. And that's our annual audit report. Debbie, are you going to take this report, please? Yes, thanks, Adana. Morning, everyone. Um, just to start off with this report, uh, the annual audit report for 2020-21. Um, this follows on with from the audit plan that was uh, set out by Ernst & Young uh, in March uh, and follows the, all the audit work that's been ongoing uh, with Olga and her team over the last number of months. Um, looking at the accounts and all the backup. Um, so the, um, the, re the report is attached in Appendix 1 um, and gives details of all the work that uh, Ernst & Young and the team have undertaken and what their obligations are, etc. Um, and overall, uh, they, in they intend to uh, issue an unqualified audit opinion. Uh, all these are all subject to matters up to being today, ongoing concern, etc. However, um, the, the plan is for an, uh, an unqualified audit opinion to be, um, to be issued. Uh, and on top of the, the audit opinion, they need uh, a couple of letters, a letter of representation and a letter for those charged with governance, uh, which were also attached as appendices to the uh, the report. Uh, so there's quite a lot of detail in there once you, you get all that sort of information. Um, and those those letters are issued at the time that they and signed by the appropriate people, Adana and Brian, at the time um, that the accounts are actually signed. Um, just to say that everything has been done within the timescales uh, that is on uh, a normal timescales that are expected. Uh, and there were some minor amendments to the accounts following discussion with uh, Olga and her team with presentational, a couple of typos, etc., that were spotted um, as, as we go through, as we went through or as we went through the audit. And these were all agreed to either leave or change and there was no disagreement um, in any of the items that uh, that we that we came across and discussed um, so that that gives a detail that their report gives details of the process that's been undertaken and what their what their what their their uh, their intended opinion is. Um, it also gives details of uh, materiality levels, which was was discussed in the audit plan that these would be slightly different to previous years because Ernst and Young were internally aligning um, their their materiality with with similar um, pension funds or bodies that they were they were looking at. Uh, and there's uh, three audit differences that were highlighted as part of that, which are below materiality, well below materiality, but w above the level at which they report to committee. And uh, these uh, audit differences are set out in the in the report. Uh, the, the, the largest one is um, an adjusted difference regarding an undervaluation of investments. These are uh, private market assets who, who we get the, the statements for quite late on. So when we close the accounts, we have to take the best information we have. So um, this item is, is always an adjustment um, uh, and obviously we keep an eye on the materiality of it. Uh, and it doesn't, the, what the, 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 the number that is there does not um, 
six. Uh, the, the number that is there does not reflect one particular investment. It's that the a whole number of investments that that come to that size. So these are, uh, it's it it is a, a a difference that appears every year. The uh, the quantum is always slightly different depending on the market conditions, um, but it is something because of the materiality um, that we don't we don't uh, don't intend to adjust. Um, there was also an unadjusted difference of uh, a small, very small unadjusted difference on estimated accruals. And again, that's to do with timing of information that we get from the employers um, and an unadjusted difference on uh, unfunded commitment. And that doesn't actually affect the investment number in the account. It's just the disclosure. And again, once again, that is a, is a timing of information. You'll appreciate that. When we're trying to close the accounts and get them ready for audit, uh, we have to take a, a cut off period of time to, to do that. Um, we can't keep them open indefinitely because otherwise we would still be doing the accounts uh, now. So we need to take a, um, a cut off of that. So that's why these differences arise. And uh, the intention is not to make any changes of those on the grounds of materiality. Um, I think. That is the main amount to say, apart from the fact that there, there is also um, a discussion to be had with regard to some extra work that or extra possible fees that um, that Ernst & Young highlight in their report is to be determined. Um, so that is a discussion that needs to be undertaken uh, with with Olga and, and the team. So I'm not aware of what the quantum of that is. I don't know whether Olga can uh, clarify or whether that will be a discussion for a bit later. But if I could just ask if Olga has got anything to add to what I've had to say and anything else that she wants to to make the committee and board aware of. Thank you, David. I think that was a very comprehensive summary, so I don't really have um, a lot to add, to be honest. So um, hopefully you have read the report. So um, as Debbie said, we intended to issue unqualified audit opinion. <clears throat> you, you might notice that we have a number of representation number of sentences in this report in the square brackets. This is just to reflect how we <clears throat> present all of the reports in draft to the audit committee. Subsequent to that, we will finalize our audit reports um, and will submit it to the audit Scotland for uh, presentation on their website. So all the square brackets will be deleted um, and all the sentences, <coughs> sorry, apologies, it's my voice today. All the, all the sentences will be updated to reflect the latest position. But um, at the current moment, all audit work materially complete and our uh, results presented in this audit reports and audit differences, um, we consider this to be final position. So we don't anticipate any changes. So as highlighted in the, in the report, this is our fifth year's appointment. Um, our appointment terms have been extended um, for the first 12 months. So next year audit, we still will be the auditors. Um, on the page four of the executive summary, uh, you will see we have summarized wider scope position. This is additional for um, audit dimensions that we require to report by the Audit Scotland Code of Audit Practice. So. Um, you're pleased to see that all areas areas are green now. We didn't really raise any recommendation um, this year, so we, we've been happy. Fund is like with financial sustainability, governance, and transparency, value for money, and financial management arrangements. Uh, you might recall you might recall that in prior year we have raised one recommendation that was just purely in relation to lack of the committee meetings for about seven months. This is purely was due to COVID. We checked and we, we basically this year we're happy that the fund have appropriate government arrangements in place and all the committee uh, were hold is normal on a routine basis. Um, our audit in line with prior year have been completed um, entirely remotely um, as a result of the obviously Scottish government restrictions related to COVID-19. Um, it did not impact our audit in any in any way. Uh, all the work was been done on time, as Debbie highlighted. So I want to thank uh, management for their collaboration and um, allowing us to complete um, audit work on time. And it's it's a great achievement, I think, um, in in the current year environment. So as Debbie highlighted, um, materiality being slightly revised. So um, 
in the planning material in the planning report our materiality being set at 23.2 million we being subsequently able to increase this materiality level slightly is just to reflect the net assets year end position reported in the analysis account so uh, materiality for year end audit procedures presented on page seven of the report um, it's increased slightly still below the prior year level but uh, it did not uh, change our sample sizes massively, uh, given we always had quite a good carriages, given the size of each individual items for each individual investment in our population. Um, I think that's probably the main thing I want to report in, in terms of the main key audit risk has been identified in the audit plan. Um, this all starting from page 11, so management override of controls. This is a standard risk that we identify on all engagement. And again, like our testing did not identify any issues related to revenue and expenditure recognition. Uh, valuation of complex investment um, designed as a significant risk. We focus on the investment classified as level two and level three. Um, we appreciate that the number of this investment, for example, level two um, um, actually uh, related to listed equities. So our risk is mainly um, focused on any um, any remaining, pretty much any remaining investments um, that are valuation for which are not publicly available on the quoted markets. Um, as Debbie highlighted, there have been a couple of audit differences identified uh, for private equity infrastructure and private debt. Um, this is all in line with prior year. We have that issue on, on the every year since the last five years of our appointment. Uh, but again, this doesn't affect our audit opinion in any way. So it's just reported to the committee uh, for information. Um, Management property funds is outlined on page 14. That was prior issue uh, when um, basically well, um, all the evaluation reports been presented on the basis of material uncertainty. Um, we happy um, as auditors that this clause has been removed by the valuers. So uh, that wasn't an issue uh, for this year. So this is just to flag um, the work has been undertaken in line with prior year. And we happy with evaluation of management property funds, so did not identify any issues in that respect. Um, in line with prior year, on page 16, we outline our consideration of going concern. So obviously, pension fund accounts prepared in line with CIFA guidance on going concern basis, but uh, in accordance with auditing standards, with revised auditing standards, uh, we are required to place greater um, emphasis of management assessment of going concern and um, perform additional procedures to um, evaluate the management cash flow forecast provided and advocacy of support and evidence to support management going concern assessment. So this going concern assessment has been provided all in line this prior year. We're happy that uh, fund remain going concern and um, it has enough liquid investment uh, in the form of liquid equities uh, in the likely event if manage is if pension fund would need to uh, basically realize cash uh, within three or four days. I think that's probably all I want to say. Um, just one point in relation to the audit fee. So we flagged um, that this is CBD, so we will undertake this discussion with management. Uh, the reported prior year agreed uh, remuneration of the audit fee, which was about 6,000 last year. This was primarily for additional going concern that was introduced um, last year. Um, and this year that was much a uh, Quicker and easier procedure. We were in court additional time, unfortunately, on the more complex investments, um, level three investment uh, valuation work. Um, this was primarily due to various um, additional reviews, external reviews, and additional procedures being imposed on the auditors in these areas. We don't anticipate this to be like at this at the same scale as prior year. Um, but we will just need to undertake uh, the discussion with management. So we will report this fee, um, hopefully in the audit plan in March 2022, or as soon as the audit fees are agreed with management. Uh, but again, I don't anticipate it to be um, in the same scale as in prior year. That's we anticipate this to be at much lower level. Um, I think that's 
pretty much I want to say today. Happy to take any questions from the members of the committee. Thanks, Olga. Has anyone got any questions, please? John? Uh, yes, thank you very much, convener. Uh, Olga mentioned, I think, uh, the contents of the, her report, page 13. It's our uh, paperwork, page 30. Um, the uh, first paragraph mentioning the valuation of complex investments particular highlights, um, again, the situation of valuation of private equity and infrastructure. Um, bearing in mind the fact that, uh, well, bearing in mind the fact that we are anticipating a steady reduction in the um, uh, holding of, of uh, private equity, uh, particularly um, could uh, you uh, or someone uh, expand a little bit on the um, situation regarding the special valuation of private equity and infrastructure? I, I can recognise particularly the, the difficulty there, but um, since it is down as being a very material um, issue of, in the valuation, I, I, I'd like to get a little bit more information on that, please. This is in relation to the audit differences, if if I understand the question correctly. Is that correct? It um, is in connection with the issue, the highlighted issue regarding mm -hmm. the the the, uh, the difficulty to value the the, the, mm -hmm. prop, the private equity funding in particular. And um, I would just like to um, have some reassurance that, um, in actual fact, this is uh, is still um, an acceptable and uh, investment and that also perhaps confirmation that um, we are actually managing to steadily reduce the holding. Um, Debbie, I'm happy to cover the first part of the question yeah. in relation to the relation. Um, so basically the audit procedures that and the take in relation to private equity infrastructure and private debt. So first of all, we um, get we get in touch with all investment managers and obtaining confirmation from their side. Um, um, this is basically being sent to us directly. So we have great level of assurance that this is the investment that should be appear in the accounts. So this is the first procedure that we do. Audit standards requires to do additional to undertake additional procedures and not purely rely on the investment manager's confirmations for this area given um, this is unquoted investment. So relation of this investment are not publicly available on the open market. So we cannot actually check this um, as opposed to, for example, listed equities, where it's quite it's quite easy procedures, and we have internal EY tools developed for these purposes, where we just put the number, like unique investment number, and it just produces the price for us, like at any given point of time. Um, so additional procedures are we undertake. We get in touch with um, basically each fund um, and obtain the audited financial statements, we then confirming with investment manager what the pension fund, Falkirk pension fund undertaking in this fund, like as a percentage. And based on the audited financial statements, we cal recalculate um, the holding of the, based on Falkirk pension fund percentage, what the holding will be as a percentage of net assets of this fund. Um, we check that audit opinion signs uh, unqualified, so the auditors were happy, the net assets are uh, presented fairly and there is no material misstatement. Um, we also, for the investment managers, um, we obtain um, quality controls review, so this is the controls that report in any exceptions um, in the internal controls on the, of the investment managers, so that gives us additional assurance that they have processes and controls in place that would allow them to value investment effectively. And basically, even though we're not relying on this investment and perform additional procedures in this area, we're happy that they have this process and procedures in place and controls are um, performing effectively. So they able to undertake effective relation in this area. So given 
all of those procedures performed, we still have a difference. That's not an unusual scenario. Um, as I said, this is a difference we have every five years. The problem is um, with that is just a purely timing difference when the financial statements is being prepared by Justina and David, David's team, basically by the management of the pension fund. We they still don't have the most up to date um, March. Um, statements that would give them the value at 31st of March um, in this private equity, private um, debt infrastructure. While we, when we come to audit these financial statements, this unaudited account in July, this is obviously three months later, um, we already have access. This is financial statements for March are being prepared. Um, for some of the funds, I might, I might, I might just flag this. Uh, we've been actually able to look at the even later, like June statements. Um, just given for some of the for some of these funds, this is just how the timings works. They just lag in one quarter effectively. So if you look at the valuation at third first of March statements, it will not give you position at third first of March. It will give you position at third first of December. So we have to wait and until like further quarter just to cover this lag and uh, making sure that our procedures capturing the most up-to-date information available at the time of we auditing financial statements. So all of that basically, even though like this is unquoted investment, um, based on our overall procedures, allowing us to conclude that we're happy with the valuation. And this time, this time in difference that we identify, this is just to flag, this is the difference in time, basically, when the accounts being prepared by management and when the most up-to-date information for 31st of March valuation for these funds are become available to us as auditors. Maybe, I don't know, like, if you want to yeah. add anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Olga. <clears throat> Sorry. Councillor Patrick, just, just to say that mm -hmm. overall private equity is reducing, but infrastructure is increasing as we're increasing our valuation. So there will always be you know, a reasonable amount um, of in these level two and three investments that there will be the differences on due to the lags that, that August pointed out about the statement times. Yeah, Does that answer you. between us, answer everything? I'm grateful to Olga for her uh, response and uh, information, and I'm also grateful for you to confirm that we actually are in a downward trend uh, as far as the private equity is concerned, recognising the time scales that will be required to, to achieve our, our ambition there. With, with your permission, um, could, could I refer to an, another matter? It's actually on the report page 19, our papers, page 36. Um, the, the, the final paragraph there refers to um, uh, collaboration, of course, with Lothian Pension Fund, which is invaluable. Um, but it has said, it talks about there as being the need to terminate a number of existing relationships. Could um, could, could uh, Demi or, or, or somebody expand on, on, on that, please? Yeah, so an, an example is... Uh, uh... Uh, is one of the fund managers that we may come on in the private, the private, I don't, the, the, the private uh, section later on um, that we're looking to uh, come out of, and we've, we, the, the joint investment strategy panel um, have looked at uh, what what uh, what fund managers we we would want to to move uh, away from and move to to some of the the Lothian strategies um, to to kind of increase the collaborative collaboration and cost savings. Um, I'm not sure whether if somebody somebody will be able to guide me as to whether I'm allowed to say who that is at this stage um, or whether we can cover it later on. No, I, I recognize the difficulty. Perhaps my question was uh, it, it was in the in the not in the correct place. Uh, and I, I wait for a further um, report later in, in the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, convener, just to say that, so, so I just point everybody back to, if, if there's no other questions, to the recommendations um, and asking to note the annual report, etc. But before I do that, uh, there was a, an, an issue raised by Councillor Balsilli this morning um, uh, about the fact that on Page. I'll get the right, the wrong one. I've 
come away from that now, sorry, on page 93 of the papers uh, and 22 of the accounts, uh, there's the list of the meetings that are attended. Um, and he has noted that a number of the attendants, he's not been able to make meetings because they clash with Clerk Manager Council and asked for a small note to be inserted underneath the table. Um, to reflect this uh, and so just really wanted to obviously with all got on the call as well because it's need to be agreed with the auditors and with the committee um, that if everybody's happy that we make a change just to to reflect something similar that's under there um, under the 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 table already for for councillor bill silly I, I, I certainly agree with that and that's maybe something we need to look at in the future when we're setting dates uh, because I, I know it is very difficult for um, councillors when we have various other meetings and obviously full council meetings take precedence. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to note that. Is everyone in agreement with that? No. Yep. No, yes. no objections from our side either. So, okay. okay, thank you. I think, uh, uh, councillor, uh, uh, the convener, the, uh, it, it does seem to cl clash with the clerk manager uh, council meetings very regularly yeah. from what he's, what he's said. So... Um, yeah. that's, it's, a, it's a difficult one. Yeah. So that, that's really all from me, just pointing everybody to the recommendations um, on page 13 of your papers and uh, asking to agree the uh, letter of representation um, and the response uh, to those addressed with governance as well. Okay, if there's no agree. other questions, agree. happy to agree. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Just before we move on to agenda um, item six, We've got two um, people calling in this morning. Can you uh, can you state who you are, please? Hi there, it's Albert Chen from oh, Lothian dialing in. That's Sorry, great. my um, WebEx isn't working on my laptop, I'm afraid. So that's fine. Thanks, Albert. So um, this is Jennifer Welsh. Same issue. I can't get the sound to work via WebEx. Okay. Did you get that, Brian? I didn't quite catch the second one, sorry. It's Jennifer Welsh, Brian. Oh, Jennifer, Jennifer. sorry. Didn't make it. I saw you earlier in the call, that's why I was confused. Thanks. Oh, okay. Just while I'm on, so I see that um, Simon's got his hand up, convener. Yeah, I see that. Simon? Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to get in before you finish the last item. Just, just oh, to say, um, I think it would be really good if the minutes um, reflected the, the, the efforts of the team to have this, uh, have everything done and the audit completed and the account signed off by the end of September. I think that's a phenomenal achievement under the circumstances that everybody's been working both both within the team and also at EY. Thanks, Simon. Totally agree with that. Thank you. Okay. Before we move on again, can I just say that um, Councillor uh, Pat Reid has, uh, has left the Council. Um, and we have a new member on the committee this morning, replacing Pat, and that's a uh, councillor David Aitchison. Welcome, David. Oh, welcome. Sorry, I've got a sore throat as well. It seems to be catching. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. And um, I've got a pretty sharp learning curve for myself, but I'm sure I'll pick up as I go along. And I'm very happy to be here. Very much so. There's quite a few trainings coming up uh, in the near future. Uh, that you'll probably get invites to, but thanks, thanks for joining us. Okay, moving on, where are we at now? Um, agenda item six, and that's general governance with Debbie. Oh no, sorry, Brian jumped, jumped right in there. <laughs> agenda item five, hand over to you, Brian, thanks. <laughs> thanks, convener, I've been quite happy I just skipped over it, but uh, here we go. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I think maybe just to recognise at the outset for a, an item taking up some 150 pages of the agenda, this is in practice is um, relatively straightforward. Um, as noted in the previous item, the accounts have been audited um, and by the conventional date uh, rather than the expanded COVID date and are set to be um, unqualified. And there's been no significant change since the draft accounts came before you. Um, if I could just supplement Simon's uh, kind words there and pay tribute to, to my staff, in particular, Debbie, uh, Justina and Alistair, um, 
just noting the power of work that goes into producing uh, those tightly packed 150 um, pages and also within the compressed and challenging uh, time frame um, that's that's required. So my my thanks as always to them. And having said that, uh, convener, I would propose just to take you straight to the recommendations um, section two, and probably um, just supplementing them with what was agreed in the previous item in terms of the adjustment um, for Councillor Bill Silly's um, attendance, which is a, a a minor consideration. But just for the record, um, I think we would. Um, just need to capture it here as well as in the, the previous item. Um, so I'll I'll stop there, um, convener. And if there are any questions, um, which no doubt will be beyond my technical abilities, I've got Justina and Debbie readily on hand uh, to help address them. So I'll stop there, as I say, convener. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I I, I too want to say thanks because. Obviously, it's a, we've got a small team at Falkirk and they have been under quite incredible pressures um, to get this work done on top of everything else. So, yeah, I totally appreciate the hard work that's going in uh, to getting this report across the line uh, in the time that you have done it. So, thank you. Do we have any further any questions on the report? No, I think we had a, a really good going over it at um, our last committee. So, happy to see uh, Accept recommendations. Agree. Agree. Thank you. Okay, we're now moving on to agenda item six. Give yourself, David. Thank you, convener. So th this agenda item is uh, general governance matters, which is uh, just to kind of update the uh, committee and board on a number of of of. Uh, of items that affect uh, the pension fund and the administration of the pension fund. Uh, first one noted uh, is about procurement. Uh, we've been making, um, a joint procurement for voting and engagement. I think the, we've been we've had a voting supplier for some time, but we've not had an engagement specialist. And this was agreed um, a few a number of months ago um, with the committee that we would uh, look to engage uh, a voting and uh, engagement specialist. Uh, and we have done a joint uh, procurement with the and Fife pension funds. Uh, and the result of that is that we are, we are literally getting the final paperwork, the final legal documents sorted now with the hope to start the contract on the 1st of uh, And the successful candidate was Hermes EOS, um, who are the uh, incumbent provider for uh, Lothian and uh, Fife pension funds. And they scored by some margin the highest score um, on quality uh, and pricing when combined. Um, the cost of the fund for the voting and engagement services is will be ninety thousand per annum, and that's broadly um, as as we budgeted it for. Um, I think I previously noted in the, my last report at the last meeting that we've also signed a memorandum of understanding with a view to over the coming months look at joint procurement with Lothian and Fife uh, on for, for global custody services. Um, so that will will be undertaken over the next week while. The next item is uh, that annual uh, that annual deadline we have for the uh, annual benefit statements to go out, um, and at the time of writing, um, the vast majority of those had gone out. Um, as the committee and board are aware, um, SIPA had their um, cyber attack, which has caused them some issues with um, getting the data ready. I understand it's just about ready. I'm hoping to get it uploaded next week to iConnect so we can then uh, start uh, reviewing it and producing the benefit statements. But because of the number that were involved and the time scales that it was going to be late, we've said we'd try and get them out by the end of October. Um, we reported this to the uh, the regulator and they came back well, along with the reasons and the work done. We've worked closely with Jennifer and her team to understand when we're getting the data and what they're telling their members. Um, so the regulator was quite happy to uh, that they did not plan to take any action at this time. 
Um, at the time of writing, we were in the late stages of getting the final benefit statements out for Falkirk Council. These have been and should have arrived, hopefully now um, already. And uh, the very last, I think there were some councillor statements went out yesterday. Um, so that, apart from SEPA, that really concludes the annual benefit statements um, process, uh, which uh, is always a tight deadline for us as well, and especially in the COVID times, uh, it's uh, not always been that easy to get information as quickly as we may have done in the past. Um, the next item is a national fraud initiative update, and I've really just been giving an update regularly on that. Uh, there are two, two we, do, we undertake this uh, every couple of years, and there was two cases um, that we're still looking into, neither of which are significant. The combined is less than £10,000, but we are still looking into that. And it was also just to note that it's not the only form that we undertake for fraud. Uh, our data is reviewed uh, annually by our mortality specialist as well. And if you look for evidence of those in the data set not being alive, so that will be undertaken shortly in the autumn. Um, the Next item is about the COVID deaths, and just really to say that there was a couple of spikes this year in August and July and uh, February, but not nearly as, as pronounced as the previous year, the spikes that were in April, May and August, September. So they're not, the deaths that we are experiencing are not greatly out of line with previous years. However, the, the mortality information uh, will be going to uh, Club Vita, our specialist, to be looking at uh, in the next month or so. Uh, the, the final items, there's not really anything to report in the legislative roundup. Uh, the corporate governance just gives you the details of our voting um, and, uh, the, and, and our engagement through LAPF. Uh, and as you can imagine, a lot of that is, is focused on uh, climate change. Uh, and finally, just Adana mentioned about the training opportunities. Uh, and I know some of you were able to join. To join. We would, went down, a few of us went down to Leeds for some training uh, recently in face to face, which was uh, which was lovely to see every day actually in person. Um, and there are some some more opportunities coming up with quite a number of you join, uh, signed up for the fundamentals training uh, and also the, the, the Scottish officers group are undertaking some training uh, over the, over the next week while. So hopefully uh, you, I will be seeing you all at, uh, at those various um, events that are coming over the next few months. So unless there's any questions, convener, I just really wanted to note the contents of the report. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, has anyone got any questions? No. I would just like to add at, at this time uh, that obviously, as I said earlier, the uh, our pension uh, team is, is, is very small. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of pressures, um, and there's been a bit of a uh, movement. Debbie has um, is stepping back as manager. So at the moment, we've been advertising for a manager and the closing date, I think, is today for that. Um, but we're hoping that we will not lose a Debbie and that's a ongoing work. I'd also like to draw your attention to Brian, who is going to be putting his feet up soon. <laughs> uh, Brian uh, Swale has uh, indicated that he will be retiring uh, next year, next March. So he's gave us plenty of notice. So there will be changes within the team uh, going forward. But hopefully in the next six months, it'll give us the opportunity to get someone not to replace Brian, uh, because I don't think that's possible, but certainly uh, to do <laughs> to do his job <laughs> as he goes into uh, pastures new and um, very jealous at this moment in time. <laughs> uh, so. Thanks, Brian, in the future, and hopefully moving forward, uh, we'll be able to recruit for the team and we'll get things uh, back up and running. Has anyone got any questions? Nope. Happy to, um, to note the report. Agreed. Agreed? Agreed. Thanks, everyone. We'll now move the agenda item seven, a uh, market review and fund manager performance. Albert, are you going to take this one or Bruce? Yeah, I'll um, I, I'll take the first paper, and then I think Bruce will will talk on the second paper about the managers. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So just looking at, um, so I have it as page 266. Uh, the committee and board asked to note recent market development, the fund's strategic allocation, the fund's performance, and the monitoring activity. So in terms of market developments over the quarter, equity markets performed uh, strongly with positive returns across most sectors, with uh, information technology, healthcare, and energy the strongest. Uh, utilities was the one exception, posting a marginally negative return sector-wise, um, perhaps reflecting the um, strong surge in energy commodity prices over the quarter. In bond markets, uh, yields fell modestly, um, having risen the quarter previously. So government bond markets generated modestly positive returns. Um, and looking forward, um, the ongoing debate is um, around the prospects of ongoing inflation. Um, so concern about whether inflation uh, will be transitory or potentially a bit more structural and a bit more longer lasting. Um, so market participants are looking closely at what central banks will be doing with regards to interest rates. Um, in terms of fund strategy, um, on page 268, we show uh, a recent position of the fund um, and its various mandates as at the 20th of August. That's table two. Um, and that table shows the relative position of all the policy groups relative to their strategic targets. Um, so slight overweight to equities, um, an underweight to real assets, underweights to non-gilt debt, LDI, and overweights to cash, and the other um, category comprising the diversified growth mandate. Um, there's obviously ongoing work to address uh, some of those underweights. So there is work um, and transactions underway um, to reduce the underweight to LDI, um, to gilt. Um, with uh, transactions from, from the other mandates. Um, in terms of fund returns under Section 5, just very briefly, 5.3, uh, the total fund returned 5.1% over the quarter, um, just behind the benchmark of 5.6%. Looking at the longer return returns in 5.4, uh, the fund has increased delivered returns of 7.8% per annum since September 2001 marginally ahead of the benchmark return of 7.7, um, and over the five-year period, a decent return in absolute terms of just shy of 9% per annum behind the benchmark of 9.7% per annum. Um, and that was all I was going to say in terms of market developments and fund strategy. I was going to leave um, the monitoring discussion to the next paper for Bruce to cover. But um, convener, if there are any questions, um, on this paper, happy happy to take them now. Thank you, Albert. Do we have any questions at this time? Nope. Happy to note the recommendations. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Very quiet this morning. <laughs> Okay, we're now moving into the exclusion of public. Um, so our live stream will now stop as we go into our private affairs. <laughs>